Magic Rocks. The year, 1944. The place, a small store in Southern California. Brothers Jim and Arthur Inglesby were putting on an in-store demonstration, trying to interest customers in a new product, a vitamin pill for plants. The brothers were getting frustrated because no one was paying attention to them. Instead, most of the people in the store were gathered around another demonstration. Wondering what all the fuss was about, the two sneaked over and joined the crowd. The demonstrator was holding up a fishbowl in which crystals had begun had been grown to make a magic underwater garden. Intrigued, Jim and Art bought a few packets of the strange crystals. At home, they tried them out and found that the crystals worked as advertised. As they absorbed water, they enlarged into all sorts of interesting miniature pinnacles and mountains. But the disappointing thing about them was that the colors were so faint, the rocks were almost completely white. The brothers decided to improve the crystals. First, they studied the crystals under a microscope in order to determine their chemical composition. Next came the hard part, finding a way to make the crystals grow into brightly colored rocks. The rocks would also have to hold their color and not fade to white. After experimenting with all sorts of dyes and substances, they finally succeeded. Soon, the brothers were able to produce the rocks in eight brilliant colors. By 1945, they had named their new project product Magic Isle Under Sea Garden. Jim and Art packaged it by hand and sold it by demonstrating in stores. Because it went over well with customers, store, store owners were happy to stock the product on their shelves, even though they were dissatisfied with the name. Magic Isle Under Sea Garden described the product well enough. It even sounded nice, but it was too long and hard to remember. The brothers kept coming up with new names under which they sold their product. Incredibly, it took them only a few weeks to figure out the formula, but it took them 13 years to come up with its present name. Not until 1958 did it become Magic Rocks. By 1960, they had turned over the packaging, marketing, and distribution of Magic Rocks to a Chicago-based toy company. However, the brothers refused to turn over the formula. Executives at the toy company were worried about this arrangement. What if something should happen to the Inglesby's? No one, not even the people at the company, knew the formula for coloring the rocks. If the brothers should die, the formula would die with them. The company executives had a good point, Jim and Art decided. Finally, a compromise was reached and the formula was locked in a safe. Will the secret be revealed? We'll have to wait and see. The ingredients of magic rocks are magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt, and sodium silicate. If you mix these chemicals together, magic rocks will grow, but only white ones. Magic rocks grow an average of two to four inches in height, but they won't grow any higher. Even if you combine the contents of two packages, the rocks would only increase in width, not height. During the 1960s, decorators used magic rocks to create offbeat furnishings such as lamps, coat racks, and table legs. Despite what many would think, sea monkeys are not an offshoot of magic rocks. Actually, sea monkeys are a type of shrimp that are able to seal themselves in their eggs until surrounding conditions are right for them to be born. Super Bowl. Super Bowls have been bouncing around since 1965. Sales took off wildly from the start. They skyrocketed. Millions of Super Bowls were sold in the first few months on the market. It all started in 1964 when a scientist at a rubber company invented a secret rubbery compound he called Zectron. A fantastic discovery, Zectron had six times the bounce of ordinary rubber. But unbelievable as it may seem, the company's director saw no use for Zectron and gave the rights to the scientist. The scientist then took Zectron to the Whammo company, where they immediately realized what a great toy it would make. Soon, Super Balls were rapidly rolling off the assembly line. That's the end of the story of Super Balls beginnings, but it's just the start of another super story. On January 15, 1967, the Green Bay Packers beat the Kansas City Chiefs 35-10 in the AFL 
NFL World Championship game. The next year, the Packers were again world champs, defeating the Oakland Raiders 33-14. The dust was still settling from this second game when the owners of the pro football teams got together for a meeting. Among other things, they talked about giving the world championship game a new, snappier name. At first, nothing came to mind. But then Larmar Hunt, one of the owners, started thinking about something that had happened a few days earlier. Mr. Hunt had been home, idly watching his daughter Sharon play with a high-bouncing Super Bowl. The name clicked in Hunt's head, Ball, morphed into Bull. And just like that, the AFL-NFL championship game became the Super Bowl. Strange but true, America's biggest one-day sports event was inspired by a children's toy. During the 1960s, more than 20 million Super Bowls were sold. In the late 1960s, Whammo produced a giant Super Bowl as a promotional item. The huge ball accidentally fell out of a 23rd floor hotel window in Australia's car. The car was destroyed, but the ball survived the accident in perfect condition. For nighttime play, there are now glowing Super Bowls. Each has ribbons of glowing patterns inside. For pooches, inventor James Borrell has created the Dog Gone Super Bowl ball. The specially designed ball, it has a tail, takes playing catch with your dog to new heights. Go Pack Go!